Hey y'all, welcome to For the Fans, where today we are so excited to have a very special guest, Big Brother 24's Pooch. So Pooch, thank you so much for joining us. How have you been? No, thank you guys. Uh, life's been a little bit crazy ever since, uh, you know, getting out of the Big Brother house. Uh, but it was such an awesome experience. Obviously didn't go uh, 100% as planned. Yeah. Uh, but that's what happens. You know, you take some risks in life and it doesn't always go as planned. Um, but things have been great. You know, it was uh, such a cool once in a lifetime ex uh, experience, you know, so uh, super grateful that I had that opportunity. Love it. So tell us a little bit about how you got into Big Brother. Like, were you always wanting to go on or what were yeah, you so it was it, No, I was not a recruit. It was kind of crazy. Um, Cause it was like me, I don't watch a lot of reality TV. I truly mm -hmm. don't. Um, and it was something that me and my mom uh, kind of did like middle school and high school. Like I remember, I think like the first time she was watching it and I was like, oh, mom's watching more like BS reality TV. And then I was sitting there like in the family room and like just hanging out. And then I started watching and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Um, and that had to be like big brother, like 12 or 13 uh, with Rachel Riley. I think it was one of the first seasons I've watched. Um, and then it was something where I kind of was like, oh, this is cool. Um, and Big Brother and the Challenge on MTV were like two of the bigger shows. I would watch reality shows. And um, but no, I never applied until this year. This was my first year applying, which is kind of oh. crazy. Um, and the only reason I did, because uh, I was coaching college football before and kind of thought that was my, um, you know, career path for life, um, the way it was going. And it was something where I was looking for another coaching uh, job. And I actually went to Tampa to go visit a buddy who coaches at University of South Florida um, in Tampa. And I actually met Travis from Big Brother 23 out of the bar. And uh, we spoke probably for like five minutes. But he was just like, he was like, dude, like, because we, me and my buddy, I went to go visit, watch the show. We saw him, noticed him right away, went up, just started shooting the shit. Um, and it was something he was super nice. And he was like, dude, what do you got going on in life? And I was like, oh, I'm looking for another coaching job. I'm kind of busy, though. He was like, just apply. And I was like, ah, like you kind of like, ah, yeah, but not really. Um, and that trip from Tampa to uh, where I lived at the time in South Florida in Boca Raton was probably about two and a half hours. So on the way home, like later, whatever it was, a day later when I was driving home, I was like, should I apply? I was like, should I? And I was like, nah, probably not really. Um, so later that week, I was applying for, for more football jobs. And like it was after a long day, we stopped applying the football jobs. I was like, All right, let me just Google the link. I was like, let me just Google what the process is like. And um, I saw it and it was just like, if it was anything super complicated right away, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, but it was something, it was like, oh, put your name, email, and uh, send in a video. Um, so I sent it, did that, you know, and then like uh, I think a week and a half, maybe two weeks later, I got a call um, from California that I didn't answer. Uh, cause like, well, I, I thought it was, I thought it was something like, oh, your car insurance or your car. Yeah. Is uh, overdue or whatever it is. Um, so I got, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Renewal. Um, so I looked and then, uh, looked at my voicemail. So, um, it was, uh, the lady, the first lady that reached out to me, the first casting, uh, director or producer that was super nice and kind of walked me through the process. Um, she was like, Hey, anybody that calls himself pooch, like, I want to get to know more. Um, it kind of, you know, I gave her a call back and I, I didn't think anything was going to happen. I was like, Oh, what are the chances? I just, like, I think I called my mom right after and I was like, Hey, I got a call back and just thought that was like the coolest thing and mm -hmm. not thinking anything else would happen. Um, but yeah, I think they kind of, I, I, I think they liked it. It was my first time. And I think it truly helped me because I had no, I had no expectations. You know, I had no idea what to expect, what to get, what was well, going to happen. What was your audition video like? Uh, so it was 50 seconds. It was literally 50 seconds. What happened is, um, cause I have a super old iPhone. My iPhone's like five, six years old. Uh, so whatever the re like, for whatever the reason is, if I record a video on my phone using the camera, um, like you can't hear the sound. So I had to do it on Snapchat. So whatever reason, whatever microphone that uses Snapchat, I do use on Snapchat. It only gives you so much time. So I used like whatever time I could get in Snapchat and then I saved it. And went to go email it to myself so I could, you know, put it through the computer and send it yeah. to Big Brother. And by accident, I actually posted on my Snapchat story and didn't realize. And I had like, I finally saw because I was doing the filling out the stuff on my computer, and uh, I see my phone's like buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. And I was like, what the hell? And I see my Snapchat. Like I'm getting a bunch of responses from friends. Like, yo, what the hell is this? Like, you loser. And I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, oh. I was like, oh no, it was a joke. Like it was a prank. Like ha ha ha. Um, but yeah, it was 50 seconds, uh, super quick. Cause I kind of really didn't know what to do. I kind of just introduced myself, what I do, where I'm from. Um, so it was super basic. I so, can see so many fans right now, like super fans who have been trying to get on the show for I know, like 20 I know. years. They I thought like the same thing. Cat. They bought a camera just to make their 
casting video. And well, you're like, let's oh, not let's help them here. out. Like, what do you think it was in those 50 seconds that that said, holy crap, we got to call Pooch? I just, I feel you got to be on right away. And I learned that too. Everything was done like through Zoom. And I think they like to see a spark right away, whatever that spark is in their eyes. Um, I think just be genuine, be yourself, but you can't wait to get on. Like, you can't wait to get into it. Uh, I think you have to have a lot of energy right away, which is, I think that's something I, I mean, that's just how I am as a person. Um, so it's something where that, that was easy for me. Um, so it's not, don't put on a show, but just be yourself, you know? And then it's just like, and the way I think of it, it's like, you're not going to give somebody a four or five page resume. They're probably not going to look at it. You know, you got to give them, give them one page, two pages, maybe get right to the, right to the facts, you know? And that's the thing I realized um, too. It's like, you know, these people, they have a lot going on. There's a lot of applicants, you know, they got to see right away and kind of make a decision if they want to get you started through the process or not. Um, and it's something where I also applied really early, I think, um, or maybe I applied in like the end of January, or early February, uh, which I think was early ish, um, which I think probably helped my chances. Wow. Yeah, that's, Crazy. that's really cool because like you said, there are so many people that audition for years or, you know, like keep sending in their application and keep reworking their video and spend so much time on it. And you're like, you know what, I'm just going to be authentic. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to send it in. And they obviously liked it. So, but, but, but I have to say like, that's how you did come off on screen. Did you watch, yeah. have you seen the episodes? Are you watching? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm up to date. Yeah. So I've been kind of watching it, doing the whole Instagram live, TikTok live, kind of catching wow. up with, with the fans and talking about the season. Um, it was something I didn't think I was going to do right away. Um, at least if I stayed on longer on the show, probably not. But by the time I got off, I think it was only like eight, eight episodes in. Yeah. So I was like, I figured I'd probably catch up, you know, and just see Because I'm a, I'm a big fan of the show. So the fact that I know the cast now on that level. Yeah, uh, makes me, yeah exactly. Now that, like, I, I'm a, such a big fan of the show. And, like, I know, I actually know, know the cast. Um, it was something where I was like, I'm going to do it. I'll enjoy it. Because um, if not, I'll just sit there and think about Because when you just start to uh, second guess, which is, you know, not good. It's just life anyway. You know, you take risks and they don't, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Uh, but I'm having a lot of fun watching the season right now, I am. Did, so you said that like everything was on Zoom. Did they ever fly you out to California to actually meet you before they cast you? Or like No, no, no. So I was actually super nervous too because once again, my iPhone sucks. Um, so like they <laughs> Somebody, have – Anybody you, listening, get him an iPhone. I know, I know. Uh, but honestly, it's been pretty good luck. So my old iPhone, I might hold on to it for a little bit. Um, but there was something where like even before the Zoom interviews, I think it was – you got a call back and then they had you start filling out paperwork like about yourself. Um and then after that, you had to like send pictures of yourself, yourself and stuff. And it was like, I don't know. I was a football coach. Like I don't take a lot of pictures. Like I usually, before now, I post on Instagram once, maybe twice a year. Yeah. Like it was <laughs> something where, and they send you kind of uh, people in past seasons their pictures, and people have like professionally done pictures, or you could tell us like the the women usually have really nice pictures, are good at editing and this and that. And I was taking my pictures with my like cracked iPhone camera, and I'm like, dude, this is a disaster. I was like, I'm so screwed, and it was getting me so, I was getting me so, like, just so mad because I was like, I like feel like I'm getting far, but at the same time, I was like, my freaking shitty iPhone camera um, from six years ago is gonna be like, what's gonna do me in? Uh, but it all worked out. But yeah, I think we sent in some pictures and a video of myself. Like they had me sent in like another video, like a quick little intro of you doing something like a dance or something to show a little bit of personality. Um, and then after that, all the Zoom interviews kind of started. And there was probably about seven to nine Zoom interviews. Wow. Yeah. So that's, nothing in person. That's kind of like I can't imagine that. Like as a as as a producer of a television show, to actually not look at a person physically. Do they make you stand up and turn around? And, so like, on the on the zooms, they make you. They made me because uh, they make you. They ask you some crazy stuff, and they actually made me dance on the Zoom interview, like a bunch of people, because uh, I had like in my uh, whatever almost like they have like a list of stuff on you, and in my list. I had that. I worked for an entertainment company. Um, I was like a hype man for like bar mitzvahs and sweet 16s and weddings. Um, but I haven't done that in years. But yeah. like they, they were in the middle of a Zoom interview and I didn't expect this. And they were like, hey, we saw you used to work for an entertainment company. Can we see some moves? And I was like, y'all serious? And they were like, yeah. And like, I got up and had to just start dancing. So you really don't know what to expect. You got to be ready. Uh, but yeah, I thought the same thing because I feel like um, when you're in person, you know, cause with zoom, it's a little awkward cause you have to like wait to get into the zoom. Then you have to press like the thing to allow your, like a camera and your sound. Yeah. So right away, it's just, it's very unnatural. And I'm so, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm so much better in person and I feel like my presence and energy, you feel a lot more in person, but I guess I did a, uh, a good enough job, uh, over zoom, but I'm, I'm with you. I definitely, I feel like when they're making that big of a decision, um, 
I thought it would be in person, but I feel like because of COVID, uh, they over the last two, three years, what I heard is they went to Zoom and I guess they've been happy with the results they've been getting. So I'm sure it just saves them time. And I heard that they used to have like open casting calls in different cities and that kind of stopped that too. And I feel like they're just, I guess, happy with the results they've been getting out of Zoom. And I'm sure it's more cost efficient and timely. Yeah, I'm sure like not having to pay for flights to LA and everything that, that cuts down on the budget a little bit, which mm -hmm. is not necessarily a bad thing. No. If it can keep the show going longer and it in, maybe in, even increase the prize amount, so absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. Um, so, so, so you got cast. At mm -hmm. some point, they flew you out, and I know you're like in, you mentioned this before. You were in isolation for weeks, I assume. Yep. Are you yeah, literally in a hotel room by yourself, looking at the wall? Like, what's going on during? The yes. Week? So I've never been to California, and I don't even know if it counts because in California, the only thing I've <laughs> seen was a hotel room for two weeks, uh, oh, the yeah. back of an SUV, a tinted SUV, and then the Big Brother house. So I don't even know if that counts that I've been to California. Um, you know, I guess technically yes, but I haven't seen much. Uh, but yeah, the two weeks was a lot. Um, I think I flew, they flew me out there. I think it was like the June twenty second. Uh, or 21st. And that's the thing that's crazy is people, people don't realize by the time you get into the house, you're probably about close to three weeks in isolation already. Wow. Um, so it's something where you definitely, you know, you're happy to see people again. And that's the biggest thing. Cause the only time you see people in that two weeks are the people that bring you your food um, and stuff like that, that who work for production. Uh, but, but besides that, your feet literally don't leave the hotel room uh, besides one day where you go to do media. So besides that, yes, you're literally looking at the walls, trying to figure out what to do. There's no computer, no TV. Um, there's no phone. Uh, so I was reading books, working out. Uh, they give you a little DVD player from like the 2000s. That's about like this big. Um, you got to ask them for movies every time you want to watch. What did they give so you to watch? Because I've heard uh, they, that they didn't give y'all any Big Brother seasons. Yeah, they did, and that's what I was kind of hoping. Um, you know, because I definitely was a fan more of the older seasons, and I still yeah. watch, but it's been tougher because when you coach football, uh, it usually starts August first as I camp, and it's like full on, like seven mm -hmm. days a week, six in the morning, twelve at night. So I've always watched, but it's definitely been harder like the last four or five years. And I've definitely I've been more into the older seasons before I had the time obligations of coaching. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was hoping they'd give Big Brother seasons just so I could watch again and kind of, you know, mentally check back in. Um, but it was something where they just gave you a list of like eight pages and it had movie names on it. But there was no trailers, anything. So it's like if you knew the movie, you've probably seen it already. And like if not, you just like I just start picking random movies and hoping they were going to be good. So, so, so we know that Joseph was an alternate but you obviously were not. Did Joseph know he was not? Like, did you know you were cast and you're just waiting to get in? Or were you like, after these two weeks, they might send me back home? Yeah, so I truly had no idea. You get a better idea. Like, I thought maybe be, I would. I thought maybe I was good because they have you do media. And I feel like they wouldn't uh -huh. have you do media um, if you're if you aren't if you're not a replacement. Um, so it's something where when they came like to uh, film in Staten Island and do my intro. Um, it's like over like a week before they're like, Hey, we might come and film and get extra footage, uh, just in case you are on the show. Um, so they let you know. And then they, once they picked out my day and like two, three days later, they're like, Hey, we definitely are coming to film. Um, they were like, uh, they called, I think they came on a Wednesday. They called me Tuesday and they're like, Hey, you ready to go? Make sure everything's set up for filming where we're going to do it location, yada, yada. Um, and I was like, yeah, ready to go. Cool. I'll see y'all in the morning. And then I was like, Hey, I was like, should I be ready to leave tomorrow? I was like, cause I'm not right now. I was like, cause I have like, I was like, cause I was moving from Florida to New York. So my yeah. moving truck from Florida wasn't in New York yet. So I had nothing besides my car. I drove, you know, from Florida to New York and, and like one suitcase. Um, so I, they were like, I was like, I don't know if you can tell me, I was like, but I sh should I be ready to go tomorrow? Like just in case. And they started laughing and they're like, we can't say, but they were like, if, if I was you, I'd be ready to go. And I literally got in my car, went to the mall, went to Target, spent way too much money on shit, uh, bought a bunch of clothes and stuff. But yeah, even like when they give you the key and did the filming and all that, nobody told me if I was like on the show or if I was, uh, you know, a replacement, a substitute. Um, and I had no idea. I don't know if Joseph knew because he didn't tell us. Um, so I don't know if it's something he didn't want to bring up. Um, or something that maybe he didn't even know because they really yeah. do such a good job. He literally might not have known. And I don't know yeah. if it's something where obviously I wasn't in that situation. So I don't know if uh, you know, they, if you are one, they do tell you. Um, but it's crazy. I'm just obviously super happy uh, that he was on the show. Uh, I mean, I don't know much about the kid Marvin that was supposed to be on. And I'm sure we would have been friends, too. You know, but obviously me and Joseph got super close. I'm happy he was on the show. And obviously he's still there and killing it. Um, so it's crazy how uh, 
you know, somebody like that and some small change, you know, would probably change Joseph's life. Um, if not, well, he would have been yeah in the hotel for two weeks and then sent home back in Florida and nothing. And now, you know, he's still on the show and he's killing it. Do you not only that, like it probably changed your life too and everybody, every other house guest. Because, you know, one extra variable in the wrong place could, could have changed the entire yeah, game. Everybody. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. I think everybody was excited for Marvin because, like, you know, he was just was very charming. I mean, he's already yeah. been on America's Got Talent. He's going to yeah, be on the yeah. circle. He got cast for Big Brother, like, Obviously, he has like yeah, a dynamic very well. personality, yes. but you know, like what this season would be so weird without Joseph. And exactly, so, he's a critical like, part, which is amazing. Uh, yeah. and it just shows truly how, like, you know, it's this close from like you know making the a crazy you know chain that's like the whole thing with paloma um you know i love paloma and i sh i hope she, she is doing well from you know when i spoke with her and doing better uh but there's something where if paloma stays Good. like two three days uh my game's probably changed dramatically uh you know and it's something where you don't know what's gonna happen you you, you, you can't play what if there. but yeah you'd that's probably still just, be there if paloma was still there which is wild it's uh you know it's yeah. not that and there's nothing wrong i'm happy she left you know and she got the help she needed but it just you know you really don't know what's gonna happen um so yeah it's little things little things like that that you know can truly ch make or break or change a game pooch do you think we're going back a little bit here but do you think that they they are so you know they don't tell you all these things because that you may be replaced or you there may be someone in your place or something like that or do you think it's so that you don't go and spill the beans which one do you like or is it a mix of both or i think it's you... probably a mix of both i'm sure they want to be flexible where if it's something where you know say they have me in a spot but then somebody sends in the video and they're like oh my god this guy's awesome like we need him i'm sure it's something where they need to be flexible and they there's no reason to handcuff themselves uh, but I also feel like they do a really good job of making sure that, you know, you're not able to communicate with other people, um, you know, before the show. Because obviously that would be a major advantage um, for those if that is able to happen. So probably a mixture of both. Yeah. I can say the last thing you want you want to do is tell all your friends and family that you're going to go do this awesome thing. And, and you don't truly know if you yes. are or not. I would keep my mouth shut. That's the thing. Like, I, I think I told like my mom. Like, I didn't tell my dad for months. Like I was like into the into the process like Zoom. Like I was on like my sixth, seventh Zoom call. And I, I don't think until like the last one I told my dad. Because you really think you're like, what are the chances? You're really like, because yeah. you, you, I, I didn't know about the really the whole process because I was just a fan of the show. I never applied. This was the first time that any show I ever applied to. It's not like, I promise, it's not like I'm applying to shows regularly. It's not. Um, and it's something where, you know, maybe you I look. Start. Yeah, I know, maybe. It um, worked. I, yeah, apparently. Um, but I looked and I saw it was like 30,000 applicants a year, this and that. So you just, I mean, it's pure statistics. You're like, I'm probably not going to get on. And, yeah. you know, you th we all think to us, I probably, we're like, what what makes me special, you know? Um so you're probably just, and I, in my head, I was just like excited that it was going further and further. But I'm the type where like I don't get my hopes up because if not, you know, I just I hate getting shut down. And it was the same thing. It was like in my head, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get COVID. Like if you get COVID right before, they won't put you on the show. And I'm, in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get COVID. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be a replacement or a substitute. Um, so it's just crazy, you know. It's crazy. It worked out. I'm blessed it did. I obviously, wish it lasted a little bit longer. Uh, but I had a lot of fun. I truly did. So let's talk about your time in the game. Obviously, we got to see your, you know, bromance with Joseph, but who else, like, that maybe we didn't see on the edited show? I mean, obviously, if we watch the feeds, we can kind of mm. have an idea, but who would fans be surprised to know that you really connected with? Yeah, but I, I think uh, at least going on a few podcasts or and with the live feeders, uh, it's crazy. Me and uh, Turner were actually closer than me and Joseph, uh, which a lot of people wow. didn't realize. Uh, you know, me and Turner uh, had a final two. Uh, that was my only final two in the game. And it was truly, you know, it was more, it, we would talk game, we talk life, we talk everything. And it's hysterical because me and Turner couldn't be like any more of opposite people. At least we thought it was one of those things we were talking. Mm -hmm. We would say up till four or five in the morning, like on the hammock, if the backyard was open, me and him just be it shooting the shit. Um, and it was hysterical because we talk and we said, like, when you go into the backyard on opening night, that first night, you kind of eye everybody down first impressions. And we said in both of our minds, we eyed each other down and said, that guy probably not going to be working with. And then uh, I don't even remember how it was. Cause usually it's like, depending like whose bedroom you're in or like who you sit next to when everybody introduces, you know, each other at the first introduction about what you do. This It's little things that help you click. And I don't know what made me and Turner click, but we clicked so hard and truly, you know, became so close. Um, and that's the thing that's, you know, I saw that the show made me and Joseph and me and Joseph were very close, but me and Joseph 
kind of just were being bros, being bros. You know, we didn't talk as much game a little bit. Um, you know, and Joseph was probably my second closest friend in the house. Uh, but me and Turner's relationship, I think, was above and beyond any other relationship I have in the house, which is crazy, you know. Yeah, that's cool. I, I wasn't aware that y'all were that close either. So, yep, yep. so does this wow. mean you, you would want Turner to win over Joseph? I, I, honestly, absolutely. Yeah, I, wow. I, honestly, it, like it was that like I if Joseph wins, I'll be thrilled. Uh, but it's something I've been very clear about where like Turner's my guy. It's something where like I've seen on the live feeds or people have been tagging me in tweets where Turner will be talking. And he's like, dude, I miss my dude Pooch. Like, that's my guy. Like that. And that, that's the shit that like, cause you truly think in two weeks, you're like, how close can you actually get with somebody? You know? And it's something where, uh, yes, I see that. Did, the Turner, did and Pooch talk about the fact that Turner and Pooch would have been an iconic alliance. I know. I know. Trust me. I wish it lasted longer. <laughs> um, and we did speak about it, but it was something where, you know, when you have no phone, no, you know, computer, nothing, and you truly just have to talk with people for two weeks, you get very, yeah. very close. Um, and me and Turner had hit it off. At first, we thought we were like, yo, dude, if you look at us, like we're two different people, nobody's going to expect it. But it got to the point where like we were hanging out so much, where something we were using Tower Vantage, um, you know, it very quickly wasn't Tower Vantage because people saw it right away. It was something where like if I was in the HOH room, uh and with other people and we'd be looking at the cameras or hanging out somebody would point out and be like they'd be like oh look it's turner he's looking for pooch and you see turner and i who knows if that's what he's actually doing or not but you go into different rooms and finally like he'd always come into the hoh room right after me um it was something where right away we just got so close so fast that people knew right away we would kind of be a duo true or false did the man take showers say oh turner yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I'll explain. Uh, I'll explain <laughs> Turner's um, shower routine. Yeah. So it's something where he'll shower one day and the next day he doesn't. Uh, which I'm a shower, you know, every day, guys. Sometimes twice a day, depending. Yeah. Um, so yes, no. Yeah. He showers, but he doesn't. Um, so I was very happy when he won the HOH and got his own shower, and I saw that they put a lot of soap in his basket. Um, but it's very weird. He doesn't smell. For being somebody who's not the most like sanitary, he does not smell. Um, and it's something where he's just like a dirt bag and I love him. I absolutely yeah. like it. I, I explained the story too. Like the, the way you, you could, uh, defy Turner is one day he asked me if I had chapstick. So I'm like, yeah, bro, I have it. It's a little squeeze bottle. So I squeezed a little on his finger. He put it on, he put it on his lips and then he must've had too much. And I saw him wipe it on his bed. And I was like, bro, you're gross. I was like, you are gross. And it's something. So it's like one of those things where we knew how close we were that like nothing would offend each other. Like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. one of those relationships where it's like, um, you know, you're so close and you hit it off. And it was something, too, where, like, I think once Paloma left, he was very upset. You know, he was close with Paloma, very upset. And, uh, you know, he was crying and very emotional. And we were talking about, like, two, three days later. And he was like, bro, he's like, it's so weird because, like, he was like, I was fine with, like, crying in front of everybody else. But he was like, when I was crying in front of you, he was like, I felt it was like that weird dad, like, father figure where he was like, I knew you were there for me. And, like, everything was cool. But he was like, he was like, I just felt, like, super strange. He was like, he worked for it. He was like, yo, I just felt like a little bitch. And I was like, no, dude, you're fine. Like, you're, you're my boy. But that's one of those things where it's like, he, like, we have that relationship where I was like, I, it's almost like I was patting him on the back. But, like, not totally embracing him, but like, you're okay, son. You're okay. It's just weird. You know? <laughs> we, we have such a good relationship, you know, I like like, somebody. Yeah. It just seems like it's like bigger, bigger than the house at that point. Like you meet. Oh, some, absolutely. That's someone absolutely. who, that's probably why crying in front of you was weird to him. Cause it's yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. crying in front of like a true friend for the first yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. As I'm listening to this, I'm sort of thinking like, like, I don't know. We podcast about this. We're talking about strategy. We're talking about all these things. And we sometimes forget the fact that y'all are humans and yeah. you're literally, you have nothing else to do. You have each other. And actually voting somebody out is an emotionally daunting, horrible, terrifying thing. And, and it's hard probably. Absolutely. And that's the thing too. Like when I got evicted, I truly had no idea, uh, like zero clue. Um, and I think it was, I think truly being like the first one to get voted out, uh, being the second one to leave, that nobody wanted to truly break my heart and end my yeah. dream. Because it was a lot of it's it's our dream, you know, especially for me yeah. not being a recruit, uh, applying, getting on the first time. It was like, you know, and I explained it too. I think my luck finally just ran out. I truly do. It was something where, um, you know, I got, you know, I think the luck played into me getting on the show. Uh, I think uh, it was some, me getting on, meeting that group of people. But I think I got to a point where it's like once I was in the house, like with me uh, getting put up against Michael in that first HOH or the second HOH competition um, yeah. wasn't a good matchup for me. You know, he absolutely killed me. Didn't stand a shot. 
Uh, then in the, when I was in the veto, when I was picking players for the veto, and I was hoping I'd pick like Joe or Turner, which if they won, they would have pulled me off. And I didn't pull either of them or nobody else pulled either of them. So something once I got into the house, uh, you know, I think my luck finally ran out. I think getting out and being blessed enough, you know, was a majority of my luck. And then I think once I was in the house, it truly just ran out. You didn't have your magic iPhone with you. That's why. I know. I know. I needed the old iPhone with me. That would have done it. (laughs) What have you been most surprised to learn about any of your house fellow house guests since you've been out? Uh, Pa, 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 pa. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Julie told me, uh, you know, right after that, uh, that Joe was a lawyer or going to law school, going through the process. And he's definitely because he plays like the bros bro type, like the, uh, you know, just a big fitness guy that like kind of the juice head in a way, um, you know, but obviously he's super intelligent. That's why he's going super far in the game. Yeah. Um, but it was something where, um, you know, it's just you, you, and Nicole being a cop was, you know, it makes sense because she's super intense as a person. Um, so that made sense. Uh, I'm trying to think But Michael. We knew Michael wasn't something with the escape rooms. I knew something was bigger than that. You know, that was one that didn't really shock me. We couldn't put our finger on exactly what it was, uh, but we figured he probably did something else. Um, but I'm trying to think what else. Like I know, but I knew like with like Turner told me early on, um, he was like, dude, because Turner's been super successful, uh, which I mean, like he worked for Mr. Beast, a guy, a very popular guy on YouTube, uh, does very well for himself, you know, yeah. financially. Um, and there was something he told me early on once we we became so close. He was like, hey, I'm going to tell you because my you're, I'm your, uh, you're my boy. <clears throat> but he was like, hey, I'm doing like not. He was like, obviously, the money will help me. But he was like, I'm doing very well for my age financially, probably way better than I'm doing. And he was like, obviously, don't use that against me if we get to the end. And I was like, no, I would never. Like, just, I appreciate you telling me that. Uh, but it's something where, you know, he's crushing it. Um, but, yeah, it's been crazy. It's kind of nothing too, too shocking. It was more of once you get out um, and you watch the episodes back and what exactly was going in the house uh, while I was in there, that was probably the more shocking stuff. So, so let's talk about that because you know a big theme of the first three four weeks of the of the show was the you know Taylor hate. Yep. What did you see in the house? Like, like what was going on? Yeah. So it was something where you know that first week where I think it was Terrence and Michael nominated, and then the veto was used to put up Taylor, and it was something. The first thing that happened was with. Something with Monty, Paloma, and Taylor. And I don't even truly know exactly what was going on. As soon as I heard it and that Taylor was rubbing some people the wrong way, I tried to use it to my advantage because I made the All Guys Alliance. And the yeah. three strongest females I felt in the house were um, Nicole, Amira, and uh, Taylor. Because I felt like some of the other girls I could persuade. Because you want to keep people in the house, you feel like you could, you know, persuade a little bit or kind of, you know, used to your advantage in, in a sense. And those were three females that, or three women, I felt that at no point when their mind was made up, I was going to have no say in it, you know? And it, that's just how it is. Um, so obviously Taylor stayed the first week. And then I knew after Taylor stayed that first week after the whole thing with Paloma, um, I knew once Jasmine was going to win the HOH or won the HOH, the first thing I was thinking was, well, because I, I made the All Guys Alliance, I, I don't want any guys going up. And then I also knew if Taylor stayed in the game, if the heat fell off her, you know, later on that, you know, I knew she would do very well and put herself in a position where she saw getting closer to people and work that social game. So that's the reason I put myself up as a pawn. It was because I truly felt that because the guys in Taylor, like, and obviously you see with the leftovers now, majority of the guys, we really had no like issues with Taylor. It was a little bit more of the woman in the house for whatever reason. Um, and that's why I felt so comfortable because I felt that, and obviously I was dead ass wrong. Um, I felt that the girls, you know, being a little bit more clicky and gossipy, um, were going to take out Taylor instead of me when I honestly thought taking out me at that point was the right decision. I would talk about it in the DRs and it's hysterical how they cut the DRs, you know, after you, but I would say, you know, and they'd have, I'd speak and they'd have me say, Hey, I feel super comfortable being a pawn. And then they would cut it. But after that, I would say, but if the girls don't use this to their advantage, get me out and then take Taylor and use them on their side. I was like, it's a bad gameplay. Um, so, and it's so something was, where they like, did. Yeah. Why, why, why the overconfidence? Like there must have been some signals in the game that that you felt these people are going to take care of me. Like, like where did that come from? Why did, like you said yourself, you yeah. knew that was the right move for them. 
Yep, yep, yep. And it, obviously, I think if you ask people now and go, especially the people that have been voted out of the house, if yeah. they wish they could have, you know, repicked or revoted that day with me and Taylor, I think a lot of them probably would have revoted and changed that decision. Um, but it was something where, because of, I thought I had the backing of the guys. So I thought the guys were 100% when I really probably only had Turner, uh, Kyle, and then Monty really had my back for a long time until he just knew the votes weren't there from things I've seen. And, you know, I thought I had Kyle more than I did. Um, you know, I still love Kyle, but he didn't have his ma- my back as much as I had his, you know. Um, but it was something where because I thought I had the backing of the guys and because I thought – because I saw the eye rolls from the girls, the comments, you know, because it's hysterical. Alyssa was so jealous. And I love Alyssa, but so jealous anytime uh, Taylor would be around Kyle. And that was literally – I'd sit there and I was like, wow. I was like, I'm literally going to survive this week. I was like, just because the girls are being petty. I was like, they're not going to seize this opportunity. And I would say, I was like, they're going to regret it when they vote Taylor out and they keep me and they're going to have no idea the mistake they made. And it's truly, they did, they got half the job done because they voted me out. But the thing they didn't do was take Taylor and get them on their side, Taylor on their side. What happened was Taylor went with the guys and they formed the pound and the leftover. Um, and it was something where, you know, they only got, and that's why I truly, because after I talked to, uh, to Julie and I saw the girls, girls Alliance and I, I was voted out, the girls had the numbers and all they had to do was win that next HOH. And I'm so happy that Turner won it and him getting out of Amira. And I love Amira. I mean, Amira hung out in the city the other day. You know, she's awesome. badass, super intelligent, uh, smart girl. We talk, I was, and the only thing we regret is not working together. Um, but it was something where, uh, you know, Turner getting Amira out really changed the game. You know, and really put yeah. that group of people, the leftovers, you know, in a really good spot. Did you? So Kevin here in the chat is asking, did you per- personally witness Taylor rubbing anyone the wrong way or being mean to anyone? And I think this is such an important question because, you know, you said that, you know, a lot of the girls were being petty towards Taylor. But did mm-hmm. you actually, like, I've been trying to figure out why the hate, why the Taylor hate, was Taylor ever actually being petty, being mean, being rude? Like, what, why did the girls get that perception? So honestly, probably not. There's, there was like little things the first week, because when everybody's so buddy-buddy, everybody looks for like the smallest, minute details. And there was little things where like, like Turner one day didn't like wash his bowl. And I think Taylor was like, you going to wash that? And like he got upset about that, which I get, dude. You're a grown up. You should wash your bowl. And Turner's not the cleanest person, uh, or yeah, Turner's not the cleanest person. But it's something where it's like when you're in the Big Brother house, you really can't do that, especially right away where people don't know your full personality. And it was more of her. Like I don't think she meant it when she would say things, but you know, just for her personality, I don't think people realize that right away. Or like one day we, we would do in the uh, the cameras or the pictures in the backyard, and production was like, hey, everybody, take their glasses off, take them off your head. And Taylor said, it was either like Paloma or Indy. And she was like, are you going to take your glasses off your head? Like, did you not hear them? And it's just like, I don't think it's Taylor. Like, you know, I think it's just Taylor being Taylor. There's nothing wrong with that. And I really don't think it was malicious or harsh. I think it was something right away where people were just like, oh, let's use this to, you know, get her up on the block. And I truly think it got a little bit worse once I left the house, like the whole you know, things that happen. And I get it. I, you know, I can't apologize for anybody. Um, but it was something where, and I don't agree, you know, with a lot of things done in the house, but when you're in that house and not to make excuses, you get paranoid and you don't know when people are trying to screw you or not. Like with the whole thing that happened with, I think it was Nicole and Taylor when Nicole, Nicole's mom and Taylor was just checking on her and being like, Hey, like you can leave the, like, if you leave the game, I'll be okay with it. Um, I think Taylor was just truly wanting to make sure that, um, Nicole's mom was okay, you know, which I get. But at the same time, I get where Nicole, you get so paranoid in the game. And I don't, I don't think I ever got to that stage of paranoia. Um, But you start to think it's like, you really don't know what to believe. And it's something I spoke, I did a podcast with uh, Adam Ponch from season 13. Um, And he, the best way to describe it, he was like, usually when people are telling you the truth, you think they're lying. And when they're lying, you think they're telling the truth. And that's the best way I can say, you know, to describe it. Um, you know, you really, you get to a point, you don't know what to believe. You really don't. You have, you see like, like that Wednesday night, I had a feeling I was going or I was in trouble. Not that I was going, but I knew I didn't feel as comfortable as I felt early on in the week. Um, you know, but you just can't put your finger on it. And like that Wednesday night, I saw the spiral and you just, you know, cause you, you don't know exactly what's going on, but you just know you're in trouble, you know? So in the chat, Dick says, don't volunteer to go on the block next time. Oh, Do you I agree know. with Dick? 
is different. 100%. 100%. And that's the thing, too. It's, uh, you know, it's not like I was a recruiter that haven't seen the show before. Like, I know for a fact pawns go home. Uh, but honestly, from talking to the people, um, talking to the rest of the house guests, there was a lot more recruits than I realized. Um, and when I, I kind of wish I didn't know that because it was like re reverse psychology. Because honestly, in my head, I thought they didn't know that pawns go home. Honestly, because obviously when you put yourself as a pawn, it's a red flag right away for the other house guests. Well, it should be. Uh, but speaking to them, I truly didn't think they knew that. And it's, you know, it just shows how good they are at the game because everybody hides, you know, um, kind of how much of the game they know. And something that I think hurt me, too, is I'm a big Dr. Will fan. Um, the last two seasons I watched before going in the house was two and seven, uh, you know, which I probably shouldn't have because the game's changed so much. See, especially on season two, there, was, there wasn't even a veto, um, you know, but I really, you know, I went back and watched Chill Town and Dr. Will, and I loved how fearless he was. Um, and the, you know how he wasn't scared to go on the block, but at the same time, he also never put himself on the block. <laughs> um, so it was something where I think I just poorly used that gameplay. And it was something where, you know, I, I think the house guests at the time think they were making the right move. And, you know, did they make a, a smart, good move? Yes, I think they did. Um, but I think a lot of people, especially that left after me and the, some of the guys in the house, I think, um, you know, they would, they would rethink that decision now, seeing how well Taylor's doing in the game. Okay, so I was going to say, seeing how the rest of Oasis has, you know, kind of aligned with Taylor since you left, what would you do different if you could go back in? Yeah, so it was kind of tough because, you know, and people were getting so mad that I would say this, but especially in exit interviews, it's, you know, Taylor is trained to compete and win, you know, being a pageant girl. I coach football. I'm trained to compete and win. So when I would say Taylor's a competitor, They'd be like, oh, but she didn't win any like she didn't win any competitions yet, which obviously she we know she won the wall comp. Uh, but before that, um, just knowing, I was like, I know she's trained to win. I was like, you could just tell the same thing with me is you know, we we love to win, but we hate to lose. We hate, hate, hate to lose. You know, it's something where we're literally trained to compete and win and you know, and, and do what we can to win by any means necessary. Um, so it's something where I spoke with Taylor a lot week one, probably more than anybody else. And it was something where once I saw the girls kind of isolate Taylor and I got wind that she was probably going on the block as a replacement nominee, I kind of had to cut that off because I didn't want it to be to, to be seen as a duo. Um, you know, it's something where I, cause I think me and Taylor is super friendly. It was something where people are getting so mad because like people are seeing on the feeds, Taylor would be like, oh, I miss Pooch. And people be like, what, is, what do they mean? She misses Pooch. Like, oh, they're supposed to hate each other. It's like, no, we don't hate each other. I promise. Um, but it's something where I think if I was there, um, you know, I would have loved to. And I think I would have been part of the leftovers. I truly do. Um, you know, because I think it was basically the guys. I think they woke up once I, you know, finally got evicted. And then um, I, I, I truly think that they saw I was time to play the game uh, to a different degree. And then uh, obviously they they were smart because getting ta Taylor was a free agent, you know, so them getting Taylor a free agent and they didn't really lose a vote because they lost me, but they got Taylor right back. So it was still even. Well, to, I, you're so right to me, like you leaving, it's sad for you and sad for a lot of us who wanted to watch you, yeah. but it was a kick in the rear end of holy crap. We're bit, we're playing big brother. We Absolutely. need the numbers. We got to figure it out. Uh, BB is asking, what was your strategy before the game? And did it change after actually playing the game? So you had those two weeks in isolation. You probably were, you know, maybe coming up with statistical models, maybe not that much in your head. But like, like you probably had an idea of what you wanted to do. Did you do it? And what was it? I promise going up as a pawn was never in those plans, especially <laughs> knowing the show. It's crazy because there's things you think you would never do. Like, you know, just don't put yourself on the block for no reason. And, like, I spoke to Amira after, and I was like, yo, was I on anybody's radar, like Jasmine's or yours? And they said no. They're like, Pooch, if you didn't come to us and say put you up as a pawn next to Taylor, they're like, you were not going on the block. You weren't. Um, and I was like, good to know. You know, I suck. Um, but it was something <laughs> where uh, – yeah, it was honestly going into the game, and I'm sure y'all saw it kind of with my personality. I know, you know, I knew I didn't want to be a floater, but I also knew I couldn't be. You know, I'm too fucking loud. Excuse my language. Um, unfortunately, I speak too much. You know, I'm kind of, I can't be under the radar. So I was kind of hoping, um, you know, because 
I, you know, I love being a bros, bro, you know, being around football locker rooms and coaching and playing sports. Like if you give me a good group of guys, I'll go to war with them. But it's something where, you know, I was kind of hoping to go into the house and have there be like two or three strong competitive guys that I wouldn't get along with because then it would be way easier for me to go after them and get them out. But then right away, I mean, I hit it off with Monty. I hit it off with Joe. Me and Kyle were cool. So right away, I was like, I was like, shit. I was like, now what do I do? I was like, I don't want to be the guy who like just looks like he's going after all girls. But I was like, yeah. I was like, I think these strong guys are going to win HOH competitions a lot. And the thing where I was so dumb is me making an all guys alliance was stupid because I learned like right after I made it where Monty wasn't trying to win competitions right away. Joe wasn't trying to win competitions right away. Kyle wasn't trying to win competitions right away, yep. which I get. But at the same time, it's like that's totally screwed me because I tried making this alliance because – I thought we'd be winning competitions as a group. And then once obviously the information got leaked from that all guys Alliance, I was done for it. But at the same time, I never stood a chance because nobody else was trying to win. And I get that, that they wanted to keep a low profile, but Michael's winning the turn. And I think he's playing a great game. And if you keep winning, it's like, you know, just because Monty and Joe don't win competitions, you know, they're sure that you guys, you could see them. I mean, they're freaking, their muscles have muscles, you yeah. know? And that was the thing too. <laughs> I was I was nervous because I thought in like the top tier of guys, like physically, it was like Joe and Monty, then like maybe me and Kyle and like maybe Daniel in that, you know, area too. And I kind of felt that if somebody was going to take a shot of the guy, it was going to be somebody in that second tier before it'd be the bigger guys, you know, because if you miss where, with that where, shot. Where is Terrence? Where? <laughs> uh, physically? Uh, I think he's at the bottom. Uh, yeah. My boy, Sweet Tea. Uh, sweet tea. And, but that's the thing, too. It's usually you've seen like people, older cast members, especially males, go home super early. But, dude, Terrence could kick it. Like, Terrence could sit there and shoot the shit with us like he's 20 something years old. And that's why, I mean, he's obviously doing nothing in the game. And that's why, with this week and this HOH, like, it, I, uh, you know, I hope that Terrence doesn't go home or, because I think it's a waste of an HOH because you keep him around. I don't think he's truly ever going to win anything. You know, not saying he can't, not saying he can't. You know, but it's if you win something, you're like, oh, damn, you know, you kind of didn't expect that. But it's something where, you know, you kind of just keep Terrence around. And it's something where, you know, I think I think using to get Terrence out is a, a waste of an HOH, honestly. Um, but at the same time, obviously, he's not the strongest competitor. Um, but I think socially, I mean, he's he's, you know, being around him is not, you know, he he, he could shoot the shit with the best of them. Um, I think that's helping him. Pooch, I wanted to ask you, going back just a little bit, because I think the the biggest thing with your game, obviously, is going up as a pawn. We've already touched on it. Not trying to beat a dead horse, but no, um, something that you said kind of reminded me. I know Big Brother and Survivor are different, but Survivor, like you see them, you see the first tribal council or the second tribal council, people talking in their diary room saying, you know, this is going to change everything. This one vote is going to change everything. And at home, we're sitting here like, what are you talking about? There's 15 other players left, 18 other players left. How is it going to change everything? Do you feel like at that moment going up, putting yourself on the block, if you stay, your chances to go all the way are extremely higher. And if you, and if you, let's say, don't nom, don't put yourself on the block or in turn go home, you were never going to win anyway, or your chances were so much lower if you didn't do that. Is that, is that kind of, cause you said, you know, you felt like you were kind of taking one for the team. You just made this guys alliance. Did you mm -hmm. feel like kind of this was a make or break kind of vote? Yeah, it was early? something where, I mean, I, if you look at it too, with Turner winning HOH, the Monty winning HOH, it, it, I probably would maybe still be there, you know, and you can't say well, you can't play the what if game, but, you know, I think my game definitely obviously would have been changed. Um, and it was something where I think I played just too hard, too fast. Like I truly was trying to build my resume because I wanted to have something for like each week, you know, because I felt like there was a lot of good people in the house where it's something where I really, because there's a lot of good personalities, I was going to have to be like, hey, I did this this week, this week, this week, which I probably didn't need to do right away. Um, you know, and I obviously came back to bite me, but I was, you know, I just want, I, I wanted to get that. If it worked out, I think it would have tremendously propelled my game because what I wanted to do too, because I basically wanted to have that pawn on my resume, but at the same time, I could say to somebody else, hey, I did this for y'all. Now y'all do this for me. Yep. And now instead of this time, it wasn't me asking them. It's kind of me telling them without them being frustrated, you know, with me for doing it. It's like, hey, I did it for y'all. Um, but it was something where, um, 
you know, yeah, I think it, it really would have helped my game. I thought that this was the safest week to to do it, and it obviously was not. Um, so, like, you know, kind of, you know, piggybacking on your point there, we're seeing the leftovers get, you know, kind of upset with Kyle. Like, hey, you don't ever want to be the pawn. You don't want to go on the block. You don't want Alyssa to go on the block. And they're getting kind of frustrated at him. So, Obviously, in hindsight, you didn't make the right decision, but I can kind of see your point. And like, hey, I felt extremely, extremely safe going yep. against Taylor, somebody you thought was going to be voted out unanimously. And you know, down the road, I can be like, I've already volunteered. Like, I've done. But you're gonna have not. Yeah, I I was, yeah. Don't make me have not. Yes, yet. exactly. And I, that's the one thing I learned from being on the show. I'm never volunteering for anything in life again because I volunteered <laughs> to be a have not, and I volunteered to go on the block, and neither of those things helped me or my game. Uh, so from now on, I'm waiting till I get picked. Uh, but it was even stuff where, like, I was thinking, like, even in the veto, I was like, Jasmine doesn't have a. She has one leg. I was like, all <laughs> I have to do is all I have to do is be Taylor. And then I was like, and then hopefully if Joe, Monty, or Turner are picked, I was like, I'm in a good spot, like a really good spot. And of course, uh, uh, of course, it was Amir gets picked, who played in competitions already, so was comfortable in the setting. You know, she didn't win that one. The Michael, the friggin' Vito King gets picked, and I'm like, oh, dude. Okay. Let me ask you a question about Michael, because like he went into the house. I looked at him physically. I'm like, this guy's not going to win a thing. Did he shock you? Because he's still shocking me. Oh, absolutely shocked. And that, that was the thing where it's once we got called for the obstacle course in HOH2, I was like, oh, this big, tall, because he's a legit, like a 6'3". Yeah, wow. big, he's, a, he's a tall dude. Um, so it was something where I was like, oh, this this clumsy dude. I was like, all I got to do is not go super fast. I was like, he's probably going to fall. I was like, all I got to do is make sure I don't fall. Next thing I know, by the time I'm like halfway through, he's finished. And I'm like, holy shit. You know, and it's something I think him being a super fan house, but he's super intelligent. And then physically, he's not the big, most muscular dude. Yeah. Uh, but even in the mermaid comp, it was something where, where him having his length, where he was able to clear out the beads. And it was something where I kind of wasn't able to do that exactly. And I was making a little bit more of a mess than I anticipated. Um, but, you know, he played a, you know, a really good game and, you know, he's intelligent. But uh, at the same time, he's a phys- more of a physical threat than, yeah, I, I realized too. So did you did you see Michael like give Taylor that opportunity to take the final shot and possibly win the veto? Or yeah, did you so, know that that happened live, or did you? No, 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 no. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea. And honestly, it's crazy because you have no idea. Not that you have no idea, but the things that you learn after the house. So I did learn right after that they were considering very much the girls in the house and Michael using the veto on Taylor, putting Joseph up next to me and sending Joseph home. Mm -hmm. And that's the craziest thing because I'd probably still be there. And like during that veto comp, I'm thinking like, yo, if Taylor wins, I'm screwed. Like I'm 100 percent done, like going home. Um, But that's the thing. If Taylor, if Taylor wins, I, you know, it's a really good chance. I'm probably still there. Joseph's gone. The whole season's changed. Um, So it, it, just truly shows at the same time you know what's going on, but at the same time you kind of know nothing. Uh, because I was thinking the worst case scenario was Taylor winning the veto. Uh, but t- if Taylor won the veto, that probably would have been w- one of the only reasons I would have been safe that week and stay so there. We get, we get to your eviction, yeah. Go ahead, hey, real, real quick. I want to just say I defended you during that power veto on the podcast. Everybody was talking about how great Michael was. If you watch that, it was actually like I'm not even just saying this because you're here, I said it back then too. You looked like like a dolphin or something like it looked like Dude, you I, that's sick. what's most frustrating that's what's most frustrating too is i got like eight balls back like i got like three or four more balls back and forth than anybody else and I, i'm telling you i still think about it and that's why i'm getting animated because i will literally never forget this challenge until probably the day i die you know anytime i see a body of water now i think about the mermaid competition and it's something where i literally gets me so frustrated because if it was a game where like hey you had to get the ball back and forth like back and just bring it back and forth like bring it to one end and then bring it back i probably won easily like 100 and it's something where you know because i couldn't get the freaking pearl in the hole i had about like three or four laying in front because i once they explain the rules of the game they were like, hey, um, you know, if you overshoot it, obviously it doesn't count and the ball goes off. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I don't want to overshoot it. So I'd rather come up a little bit short than I overshoot it and, you know, take a turn. Uh, but it was something where I kept coming up short. And I realized what I needed to do really was when I went down, I needed to go a little bit slower because I was knocking all the blue beads in front of my pearl, in front of the little holes. Um, and I was getting in the way and then I, I, I realized going back, I could go as fast as I needed, but when I was going down, I was knocking way too many of the pearls and I wasn't tall enough 
tall enough to really block him the way I needed. And I saw I was even closer than I realized because it looked like the ball was going and it would hit one of those little blue things and like bounce away. And I was just like, dude. Uh, so super <laughs> frustrating. Yeah, I will never forget that challenge. Um, absolutely. Because I felt really good. That's the thing. Like I felt great in it. Like me and Amira would literally text him today and I group message and uh, we were BSing. And I was talking about me not feeling well right now. And I was like, Amir, this is all your fault. I was like, I could still be in the big brother house. I was like, because I, I was like, I'm back in the real world. Like, I'm sick. I was like, all because you thought I was a threat. <laughs> and she literally typed back in the text. She was like, yeah, we, she was like, we saw you during the mermaid club. Like, that's why we did That's what I'm saying. You it. were like swimming on that. It was, it was great. Yeah. Put you a born mermaid. Look, what, what, what can we say? Dude, I'm telling, I'm <laughs> so mad, you know, because it's one of those things where, I truly felt like I like knew I was like Terrence. I watched competitions. Terrence looked like a fish out of water. My boy was struggling. My guy was Literally, like Amira. Amira. <laughs> I was talking to Amira about it, and while she was struggling too. So besides, I'm surprised Taylor did really well for herself. And um, you know, she was ripping up her knees. So I guess she was just literally dragging her entire body and was doing by any means necessary. Um, you know, but Michael too. But me, Michael, and uh, you know, me, Michael, and Taylor. It's it's it just it's because if you see my face when I picked out the uh, the veto uh, nominations or picks, I picked Terrence and I'm like, Terrence, and I was <laughs> pissed. I was pissed, dude, because oh, all I needed I, was. I thought you were like, okay, I got this. I'm gonna win. Well, in in a sense, I was like, okay, like, uh, you know, because I was the last person to pick, so none of my people got picked already, like in my alliance. So I was like, hey, I really need somebody right now. And then I picked Terrence, and like you said, it's okay. I'll probably be able to win or beat Terrence. But at the same time, I knew it was probably not somebody like, you know, I would be able to, yeah. you know, that would help me. Um, so, so. so we get to your the worst night of the season for you. Hmm. Um, unanimously, you're voted out. You said that you didn't, you, you didn't see it coming. Um, you, you said you sort of felt things changing on the night before. So my question, like, what is that like? Like, how does that feel? What What is going through your mind? You're walking out the door. You thought you're you're set. You're good to go. Yeah. Taylor's going. Like, what is that? <laughs> and, and not only that, you walk on a stage. There's Julie Chen that you've been watching for years. years. Then you probably have interviews after interview. Like, like, what is that whole experience like? It, it was just pure shock. It honestly was shock. And people were saying that, oh, he must have knew he was going home because he was dressed up. You know, because they tell you what competition you have the next HOH. And they said it was endurance. Um, but the only reason I got dressed up is because I was like, okay, okay, if this is the one time I'm going to meet Julie Chen, it's not going to be in a tank top and, mm. you know, gym shorts. Um, so my plan, when I had, I had my HOH clothes in like a closet next to us, uh, which you saw, I grabbed the clothes before I left because I wasn't just going to leave them. But my plan was, <laughs> hey. I know, you bought uh, those at Target. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Um, so my plan was to hug Taylor, say goodbye. And then I uh, get dressed for the HOH competition quick and, you know, do what I had to do. Um, but obviously didn't go as planned. You know, I was in pure shock because I heard 12-0 and I explain it every time I talk about it. I heard 12-0 and I was like, 12-0? I was like, oh, your boy's good. I was like, wow. I was like, I didn't even need to comp campaign as hard as I was campaigning this week. I was like, the fact that I survived, I was like, holy shit. I was like, this was a close call. Never doing this again. Um, and then Julie Chen finished with the other half of the sentence of Pooch or evicted. And I was just like, you see my face. It was like, cause it, I went through, I was like, I was sitting there with like a little smirk of like, holy shit, this is so cool. I'm on the block. Julie Chen's about to like seal my fate or like keep me here. Yeah. Like, this is amazing. Like I'm such a big fan. And then it was getting a little bit closer where she actually is going to say it. And I was like, okay, I don't feel as good anymore. Cause I'm actually nervous. And then she said it. And I just had the face of like, I think I literally made the face of like, damn like just shit like you know i it's respect like, you saying that like like still saying like oh i was so blindsided because you see all the time like even like if you play like an org online game mm -hmm. like someone can get completely blindsided that is the last thing they will admit like oh yeah. i have no possible idea so i respect so much that you're, you're oh, like pure yeah, shot. got me good because people have a very hard time saying that so i just that's the thing that I, I being open that. about that is great I like as like a competitor and like i guess coaching football and being in that industry if i get my ass kicked and somebody gets the best out of me and beats my team and you know the coach is better than me i, I respect, respect that you know yeah i absolutely respect it you know i respect the game of big brother just like i respect the game of football you know if you got the best of me which they did that week you know i don't know if it would be every week but that week they did and it was something where you know i felt good early on in the week but i knew i was in trouble like after the power veto um all the girls and Michael were in the in the HOH room. And I was like, okay, like, 
that's never happened before. I was like, all the girls, like girls definitely, they've hung out like different groups. But I was like, every girl and Michael, I was like, your boy might be in trouble. And then that, I was like, oh shit, like I'm probably in big, big trouble. I'm talking to Alyssa. And Alyssa, somebody, she's a little bit more sensitive. I knew I could use that to my advantage. I think she'd have a tough time lying to me. You know, we were friendly. And I was like, Alyssa, I was like, I sat, I sat it down. We were in the kitchen, just me and her. And I was like, what the hell is going on? I was like, there's some shit going on. I was like, I see people going into like back bedrooms, like shit's going on. Like wasn't happening. I was like, I was like, you know, I had your back. Like I told you when I was going through the whole backstage thing, like if it was something, well, I had to, I had to make a decision. Like you weren't going home. Like I promised you that. I was like, what the hell's going on? And she was like, well, she was like, we've like been hearing about the all guys alliance. It's been making the, the uh, girls nervous, which I'm sure because all the guys hung out super close. So I was like, all right, that makes sense. I'm fine with that. Like that, like that's still not confirmed. But then I heard, um, but then she said after she said, yeah, the Oasis. Um, and once Alyssa said the name of it, I was like, there's no reason you should know the name of that. I was like, there's no <laughs> reason, like zero. Yeah. And because um, the only time we like confirmed it was in the uh, have not room with all the guys. And that was like the only time. And uh, I was like, once she said that, I was like, I'm probably done. Because if she was smart, which the girls were, all they had to do was go to every other girl, say, hey, he saw the deal. He's the head of the snake of the All Guys Alliance, which I was. I named it, tried making it. Um, and then all they had to do was go to Michael and Terrence and say, hey, they made, he made an All Guys Alliance and you were a part of it. Um, which, obviously, I would be pissed too if I was a guy. And the only reason they weren't included is because I didn't want to make too big of an alliance. Because if it's that big, you know, you know, it's just going to – I made an alliance of – five, six people and shit got out. Can you imagine I made an alliance of eight people? I can definitely, mm -hmm. that would have probably been even worse. Um, well, so once so, that got out, I was, I knew I was screwed. So did, did production, you know, Dick's asking the question of, did production give you a heads up on what to expect uh, when you got out? Like, what's that process? Like you walk off yeah. that stage, you're, you're released into the mm -hmm. wild again. Like, what do they tell you? So what happens is you, once you meet with Julie Chen, you do the short interview, then you do the extended interview. And my uh, my experience was a little bit different, actually, because the live show got moved because of the January 6th trials. Right. Um, so I was so confused because Julie had to re-ask me a question once because she goes off a card. And I guess whatever the card said, she was confused about. Um, and you see in my ex extended interview, I'm like, wait, I'm like, like, I asked her about the question. And that's where she wasn't sure. And she had to, like, check with her earpiece and, like, took, like, like a minute to check with somebody. I was like, aren't we on live TV? I was like, I was like, what's going on? Um, that doesn't like make sense. Uh, but then I learned shortly after that it wasn't live. Uh, but after that, you basically get debriefed where they put you basically into like a dressing room. You're still at the studio, just a different area of the studio. And you meet with the producers of the show. Um, and they spoke to me and they actually made me feel, um, you know, a little bit better in the sense that they were like, um, because it was Allison Grodner, because which you really you talk to her during the interview process, and then you don't talk to her again until that debrief. So I only spoke to her and like two, three times. Producer. Say it again. She's the executive producer of the. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and it was something where so she like she was like, hey, I really appreciate how you handled that. Like we knew you had no ear, and you kind of got screwed, and you kind of went out about it the right way, you know. Which she was like, I we appreciate. And then right before that Zoom uh, stopped, one of the another executive producer, which I don't even know who he was. Um, he stopped it like right before it was about to end. He was like, hey, hey, I just want to say something. He was like, hey, we respect people that play the game. And he was like, you were playing the game right from the jump. He was like, you, you tried to make a big alliance. You tried to make a big move. He was like, it didn't work out. But he was like, we appreciate people that just don't sit around and, you know, try to make big moves and play the game, which made me feel a little bit better because at the end of the day, I knew that's what I was trying to do. Um, so that felt nice. And then they kind of, after that, you meet with the producers. Then you meet with like the PR, HR uh, to see how your experience went in the house. And then they prepare you for things going on in the outside world, how you might be being perceived, things being said about you, yada, yada. Did, did they let you in on the fact that the world was going crazy about Taylor's treatment? Or the Twitter yes, world, yes, at least? Yes, yeah, kind of, kind of. They could kind of let us know. Um, you know, they understand the show, so they kind of get really what's going on. Um, but it was something where, you know, they kind of just give you a heads up. Um, cause I had no idea. They don't even give you your phone back that night, which sucked. Um, I didn't get it back till Friday when I left to fly back to New York. Um, because I had to, what they do is you go back to the hotel where you stayed for two weeks and I was like, holy shit. I, was like, I didn't ever, yes. I was like, I didn't ever want to be back at this place again. I was like, are you kidding me? And then you sit there, um, and you don't have any phone. So what I did all night was just think about my dumb decision for literally, I didn't get a, a minute of sleep that night. You know, I literally like my, like you're emotionally so exhausted. Like I was so tired in the sense of from being in the house, from, you know, my life just 
got turned upside down. You know, I thought I was going to be in the house, thought I was safe. Now I'm out of the house. What's life going to be like? Yada, yada. What could I have done differently? So you stay up all night. Um, and then obviously I flew back to New York the next day and got my phone back and started seeing exactly what was going on. But they gave you your phone back in New York or, or in no, California? No, no, that, that in California before we left for the flight. So that, that you, you did all of your press before you got your phone back. Yeah, so it was it was I didn't get as as much like as CBS. I've been doing a lot of podcasts and stuff on my own. Um, but the um uh, Mine was kind of different because they couldn't do any media because the show didn't air till Sunday. Uh, so the normal media that they set up for you to do with the hotel, I didn't do any of that. So I basically just sat there all night and thought about, you know, how much I sucked at Big Brother uh, that um, night. Um, so it was something where, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, until I got my phone back that Friday morning and really got into the Twitter world and, you know, everything who, going on. Who was the first person you called when you got your phone and why was it your mother? Um, yeah, so yeah, it was my mom. That's yes, cool. I, I really it was because obviously she's the you know they were having a watch parties for me this and that and you learn that. Um, what did she say to talking you? to him? She was like, "Turner and Joe had your back. The rest were fucking you." Um, did you bitch know. smack you in the head? All she was, yes, yeah, she was. She was just like, "What do you think?" And I was like, "I don't know." You know, I try making a big move, and that's the one thing. It's like I take a lot of risks in my life, um, and sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Like I left Staten Island at the age of eighteen, went down to Florida, didn't know anybody, not a soul. You know, sleeping on couches to try and coach college football, um, and it worked out. And you know, I was able to get my master's for free and have great experiences and travel the country coaching college football. And, you know, that was a, a risk that played out for me. Uh, you know, applying to Big Brother was in stopping and getting out of, you know, football was another risk that worked out. But there's so many risks in my life that haven't worked out. You know, it's just you hope that, uh, you know, that they there's more that work out than don't. Um, but that's the one thing I always know, like, at least in my life, um, you know, at least they say in your 20s, like, you should just go for it. And that's kind of what I believe and what I try and do. Um, so it's something I won't be mad at myself in the sense where it's like, obviously, you could think about things you've done differently or would do differently. But at the same time, you know, if I didn't take a risk, like just like I try to take on the show that didn't work out, I probably wouldn't even have been on the show. So. Right. Uh, so so one of the things I'm BB is asking and probably one of our last game questions in retrospect, what is the most important skill to be successful at in BB social game competitions, win strategy, or is there something else? Good question. Really good question. And I really think it depends who you're in the house with. I think it's just, you know, I think your personality plays a huge part in it. And I think your, uh, your social game is, huge at least right off the bat because that's how you get close with people and it's something where because i have a big personality um one of the biggest alliances in the games right off the bat which i didn't know was a uh, pose pack um yeah. which was something where that was a majority of, that was the big alliance i was made early and i saw a clip and they wanted to include me in it and then they were like oh pooch is a, he seemed like a wild card potentially and that's just because i have a big personality and it's something where just like in my regular life like i'm the class clown like i can shoot the shit with the best of them i promise you um, and it's something where it's a gift and a curse because I'm very good at, you know, being the jokester, the funny guy, but I'm very good at also shutting it off, you know, and having that serious conversation and not letting it, you know, that sense of humor of mine come into play. But I feel like it's harder for other people who still see me as funny pooch, um, you know, that try to, you know, they, they don't see me. It's, I, I might be being serious in that moment. But they don't see me as being serious. You know, they see more of a wild card, more of a big sense of humor, the big person. And even it's affected me in my personal life, too, even with like promotions and stuff and work. Like I, when I was coaching, I do my job really well, I work my ass off really well. But I also like to have my fun, you know, and joke around. And then I feel like at certain times it got to that point of promotion that I didn't get those promotions because a lot of the upper level coaches saw me as a guy pooch, you know, which is it is what it is. You know, if it's something where, you know, having <laughs> having a little bit of personality, you know, is my downfall. I'll be okay with that. Um, but yeah, I think if I hit that a little bit, it definitely would have helped because I think if I got included in that majority alliance right away, it definitely would have helped my game. Especially in Big Brother, I feel like that's hard because if you look at like the history, especially like past few seasons, they're not casting, you know, funny and serious Pooch. They're they're probably yeah, casting yeah, exactly. Pooch because he's funny, right? Why? Like yeah. he's entertaining. So <laughs> if I'm gonna make if yeah. I'm gonna if, I, if I'm gonna make an alliance you know, if, and I have to look at everything. If I'm thinking, oh, Poo Pooch is this really outgoing, funny, you know, guy. I think about them casting you, and I don't, I don't think, oh, well, he probably has this serious like game side. He wants to win really bad exactly. and wants to work. So, 
I can see. And that's the thing. I really saw. I really thought that maybe like only Turner and a couple other people, some of the guys saw that side. Uh, but there's something. Where I, that's the biggest thing. I love the game. Like I that the one thing I miss about being in the house is some of the people, obviously, because I got so close with them. And then it's almost like they were just taken away. Um, but just the game, like the mental, like strat- strategic part of it. Like I love playing the game. And it was something where that's why I think I probably overplayed it. And that's the biggest thing we're coaching. It's like if you guys remember and know about football, when the Patriots played the Seahawks in the Super Bowl and they were on like the two yard line and they could have handed the ball to Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. And they threw it and threw the interception. It's just like th- and that makes so much sense for me. It's just like because you just overthink shit, especially as a coach. You just instead of doing the easy decision or the easy choice and like, you know, probably the right choice you're just like oh no let me do this because you just overthink it for no you throw reason. the ball to malcolm butler exactly that's exactly what i did and if i could have just you know for one more week just was like hey like let me not if i thought for a second it was like pawn week two probably doesn't you know outweigh the risk reward factor um you know i think i would have been in a really good spot in the game um you know, but at the same time, like I said, you know, you kind of can't look at it like that in a because if not, they'll just eat at you. And I've there's been some nights, trust me. Like it was like I think maybe like four or five nights ago. Um, I went in and like Twitter searched like about everything from like when I was in the house and what exactly scary. Would happened. So yes. scary, right? Very because you think you see shit and then you get pissed at people and this and that, and you get pissed at yourself, and it's like, but you also see funny clips because I see a clip of um I saw a clip of Monty and Monty, we die about it in the, uh, we keep throwing it in the group message with me, Amira and some of the other people out of the house. Uh, but it's, it's a, a, a video of Amira and Nicole are in the storage room talking to Monty. And I guess it's when the real plans of getting me out and Monty's like, Hey, like, like, I don't think we should do that. Like Pooch is like, he could be a little bit of a wild card, but like he's never mentioned either of your guys' names. Like he hasn't, and like I think we should keep him. And it's hysterical because Nicole and Amira just aren't having it. They're like, no, 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 no. They're like, no, yeah, they're not having it for a second. And it's hysterical because Monty finally just had to give up. Where he's like, you, dude, I'm not gonna win this battle. Um, but at the same time, it's something where like I also like I got pissed at Monty first. You just you get pissed at everybody for a second, but it's all you know. I love all of them, but I saw a video. Where after I made the Oasis, um, uh, uh, Monty's talking to Paloma in the um, storage room and Monty like right after talks and brings up the Oasis. And then like you could tell that uh, Paloma was getting to that point where she was really spiraling a little bit and just, you know, saying some stuff that really didn't make sense. I'm like, dude, you really decided to work with this person in the game or like rat out this information compared to me because I, like, I saw that video i was not like you think i was a wild like car wild <laughs> after. um and you know that's not hopefully not right to spit it's just like something where it's like damn you just don't you don't understand why everybody made the moves they did but at the end of the day it's just like uh you know i, I truly do love everybody in the house i really do i'm gonna hang out with a lot of people hung out with Amira and she was the person that planned my demise you know yeah um so it's something exciting kind of just see everybody and really see uh uh where after the season you know what's in store for all of us so who's gonna win the game what's your prediction honestly i i truly i want to say my first choice personally is turner but i feel like he doesn't have that pair right now in the house that you need to that will really always have i think i was that pair for him but right now i don't think he has that like monty has joseph I even Joseph has a little bit of Taylor. You know, Michael is Brittany, uh, uh, Monty Joseph, um, Kyle, Alyssa. Uh, so it's something I think it has to be probably more of those. I would say, obviously, these next situation is going to be critical. If I had to put yeah. my money on it right now, I think um, maybe Monty. You know, I would say I think if they won't let Taylor get to the end, because if Taylor gets to the end, I think she's the clear winner. And if they don't vote her to be the winner, everybody in that house is dead ass wrong. Um, but I think Darren Taylor in that house and they won't let it come to that because they'll know you know what she endured especially early on to make it and get to the finale and you know she'd be the winner or she'd have to be you know um but uh yeah i'd have to go probably monty and joseph would be my like you know my not bias purely you know game wise i'd probably go monty and joseph awesome i got one more question have they said anything to y'all about is there going to be a live reunion um i really hope yeah, I know, no, which is obviously super good news, super exciting about, you know, I wish I, uh, if I got evicted to a live um, audience, probably would have liked that a little bit better, but it's something, um, it's weird, because when I first got out of the house, they told me COVID was getting super bad again, and obviously I've been in the house in, in LA for a month, and once I got out, got my phone and everything, kind of seemed normal, like COVID really wasn't getting worse, so it was weird, in the sense um, where it was like, it didn't seem like things got worse, maybe they did, um, but you know, seem, things seemed like they've been going halfway decent 
Um, so I'm really, you know, I would love to, you know, cause I would love to get to see Cali a little bit more because I haven't seen much of it. And then I will also, somebody's going to win $750,000 and their life's going to be changed. Um, and I would love to be there for it when it happens. Cause you know, I truly do. I, you, you go through this experience with everybody in the house and the truth is like once in a lifetime. Um, so it's something where I would love to be there. I truly would. What happens next to Pooch? I think you have a business degree, I believe, a master's degree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So are I have my. Going, uh, are you going the media route, or you know, you got to go make some money on Wall Street? What, what's happening? No, no. So I really do. Um, I had some opportunities, uh, which actually probably worked out by. Uh, I might. It's like everything works out for a reason. So the fact that I got evicted obviously sucked. But now it's like gearing up right before the college football season. And like that's my cup of tea. And it was even something I had some opportunities to go coach at two different decent high level division one colleges again. And wow. it, I turned them down because it was something where I wasn't ready. I know when you, when you get into that profession, you have to give your all. And it's a, it's literally 16, 15 hour day commitment is a week for six months from August to January. And I wasn't ready to give that right now. Um, so I turned that down, but I would love to get into sports media. Um, it's something I'm really trying to do. You know, I've never, I don't have any experience with editing, podcasting, all that. But I think, you know, once I learned that, it's, it's just like, it's like anything else. You put the time in, you know, and you'll figure it out. And you talk to the right people or get the right guidance, you'll figure it out. It's like the same shit. Like, like I started making videos on TikTok and like I had no idea what I was doing. Like, now I'm doing it right. You just learn, you know, it's like anything else. Um, so I would really love to get into sports media, you know, do some college football uh, content. Um, obviously big brother content as the season's going on. Cause I love, you know, going on Instagram, TikTok live with the fans, you know, following along with them. I have a blast. Cause you know, when I was a, you know, when I, I was a, when I was a fan, like I'm not now, I still am a fan. Um, but you know, if, 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 you know, when I was a fan, somebody got kicked out of the house. I like when they engage, you know, they get in and kind of give some of the behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to do that and then hoping to transition into college football and hoping to go to some games and make some content and stuff. I think it would be a lot of fun. So. Amazing. Where, where can people find you? Yes, all my uh, my uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, my social media. It's all Poochie underscore Main. It's like Gucci Main. I felt like it'd be it'd be uh, catchy. Uh, trust me, I'm not putting myself in the same ranks as Gucci. I'm not, <laughs> um, you know. But it's just I felt like it'd be a catchy name, so I had that change that to my social media before going on the show. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely be putting out some stuff. I'll be putting out some content, big other stuff. Uh, absolutely, yeah. college football in the next couple of weeks. So it yeah. definitely won't be the last time you're hearing from Pooch for sure. All right. Love it. Thank you so much, Pooch, for giving us your time and answering so many questions. I think yeah. that, you know, our uh, audience was able to get in some of their questions and we appreciate it. So anything no, thank else? Thank you so no, much. No, thank you. I, I, I had a blast. I love talking about the game, talking about Big Brother. And it truly helps me come, not being in the house, being able to talk about the game with y'all and other podcasts. Oh. Uh, it's been awesome. So I, I appreciate y'all, you know, having me on and talk about it. Thank you, Pooch. Anybody listening or watching, subscribe. We've got a giveaway coming up um, of a signed power of veto um, from a former Big Brother house guest, not BB24, but a former Big Brother house guest. So make sure you like us, you subscribe, you know, keep on joining with the conversation. You'll see some nice, exciting guests coming up as well. Pooch, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate it. We will be back live tomorrow night after the episode. We'll see you later, guys. Bye.